Hello everybody, it's Rob here with some more stuff. How are you? I hope you're alright. And I wanted to show how I go in after uh, taking pictures with my GoPro, uh, some of the things I can do. Um, now obviously with the GoPro it's designed to take snapshots and you can have some settings that make it look, the colours and everything look better um, straight out the camera. But what can we do to make them look more like uh, DSLR photos? Well, in this tutorial, I want to show you some stuff which I would do. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm in Lightroom at the moment, and I'm going to correct the uh, lens distortion, which we all know and love. And it is a bit laggy, my, uh, my Mac at the moment, just because I'm recording. So let's go into the basic panel and let's just check some of these settings. So I'm just going to go into lens correction first and enable the, the profile and as you can see it corrects that straight away and do I like it it's a little bit a little bit stretched at the front but I'm actually gonna leave it and I'm gonna just change the angle so I'm just gonna make this a bit straighter so somewhere around there Okay, let's just, there we go. So straight away we fixed the horizon. Uh, we've got some, rid of some of them distractions. Now I don't mind that there's a few areas that are stretched. Um, I don't mind that. Um, the whole point of the tutorial really is for the next stage. And I need to go into Photoshop for that. So while I'm in Lightroom, I'm gonna press Command and E. And it'll give you these options. It says edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments, which I'm gonna select yes to. You can edit a copy and you can edit the original. I'm gonna edit a copy with the um, adjustments I've just made. So click on edit. And this will go into Photoshop and open up the photo with the adjustments. There you go. So it's still got the horizon that's fixed. And now we're using layers, I'm gonna uh, duplicate the layer a couple of times so I'm just gonna press command J a couple of times and I'm gonna shut off this first background layer so what we're gonna do now I want to give it a bit of a depth of field a shallow depth of field uh, that you get in all the DSLR or not all of them but the you know the better uh, photos that bring out the subjects and blur the background and to do that, we need to create kind of like a mask. So I'm gonna do that now. So we're gonna go into the quick selection, but before I do that, I'm gonna just make a new layer underneath this one, and I'm gonna fill this with white. And I'll show you why in a moment. Then I'm gonna click on the top layer, click on the quick selection tool, and up on the top left-hand side, the select a mask box will Will come up and I'm just going to click on that now this has gone to a kind of faded white color because the transparency over here on the right hand side and this is what's new with the new update that happened a few weeks ago um, the refine edge dialog box is now this and these bits are very similar but this bit up here when we go on the view mode and we we pick the onion skin we can go to the usual marching ants, overlay, all the other stuff, but the onion skin gives you um, kind of like a um, a preview of what your selection would like uh, with the underlying layer. So if you remember, I put down a filled white layer underneath this layer, and that is why if I move the transparency down, it disappears but if we move it up it's showing you the layer underneath so just remember that when you're using this and you want to put a subject on a different background you can kind of toggle between the selection on how it will look like on the other layer so right that's enough of that let's make a selection so on the left hand side we can use these tools the top one is the selection tool and I'm just gonna make it bigger with my right bracket key and then as we click and paint over, it's gonna make the quick selection like it would do normally, but it gives you like the pre preview of how it's gonna look like. 
Now, using this technique, the, the selection doesn't have to be too precise because we're not putting the subjects on a different background. We're using this as kind of a mask, mask to give it a nice blended blur to give it the shallow depth of field effect. And I'm just going to hold my option key down and paint over these areas that I missed. And I'm not going to be too precise about this because you don't want me to spend too much time doing this. I'm just going to move the, the transparency up so I can see what I've missed. And if we zoom in down here, and just make the bracket, the brush smaller, holding down Option or Alt, I'm just going to paint here and over here. And then reselect that. Okay, that's good enough for this. I'm not going to spend too much time doing that. But what I will do is just refine it a little bit. And using this second um, brush down, this is the Refine Edge brush tool. Short key, uh, shortcut is R. And then I'm just going to click and drag just around the edges just to get the um, a bit of a better selection. I'm not going to spend too much time doing this because you don't want to see me doing this, obviously when you're using something and you know you want to put it on a different background obviously you take more time doing this and make a better selection but that's that's enough for now so that will do so the selection we're going to put on we're going to leave all these options where they are and I'm going to output to a selection and in fact I'm going to put it on to a new layer with layer mask. Let's try that and click on OK. So there we go. I don't need that uh, white layer that we filled earlier now. So I'm just going to turn that one off and I'm going to turn the layer underneath the mask layer back on. And here we go. We have the um, mask on the top. Now I'm going to actually command click on the mask and then back onto the subject and I'm going to put this on its own layer I think fill this with black that's because I didn't um, change my uh, background and foreground colors but that's all right so right what we're going to do now is we're going to make the rest of the mask so I'm going to turn this one off and we're going to use a, a gradient adjustment layer I'm going to deselect Command and Control and D, and I'm going to click on the layer underneath. We're going to go to Gradient Adjustment Layer, and I'm going to click on the gradient. I'm going to choose background, uh, foreground to background, and I'm going to just make a small adjustment. Now, in this, as you can see now, the area in black will be masked so all the areas in white will be revealing the blur so we don't want it blurred where the subject is so we can kind of blend it in using these sliders here and I'm just gonna bring down the white just a little bit just to give it a bit more of a blur in the background and just adjust this just a little bit there we go so that's good for this. I'm going to click OK and click OK on that. And this will be our mask for our subject. So I'm going to select both layers together. I'm going to go into, I'm going to actually put them in their own group, Command or Control and G. And then I'm going to go into channels. All the channels are the same because it's black and white. And I'm going to duplicate this blue channel. It could be any of the channels really. And I'm going to rename this this uh, depth map. And I'm going to enable the rest, go back into the layers, and then I'm going to turn this one off now. So we've created the mask. What we're going to do now is apply it to our original photo. So I'm going to go up to filter, blur, lens blur. So the important thing on this uh, box that appears, I'm just going to turn the preview off. 
So the source now, it says depth map. Well, that's a depth map. Whatever you called that, you can recall up here. We called it depth map when we put it in the channels and duplicated it. So this, you select the depth map or whatever you want to call it. And then if we turn it on, this then is using the blur with the mask. So we've created a mask and the plane we're stood on is in focus and the, the blur gradually gets more and more as the distance gets further and further. Now we can change the settings to make it more or less blurred and just to increase the effect. And I'm gonna say okay there, I think, I like that. And there's more options here to tweak the uh, blur, but I'm gonna leave it like that for now. So I'm gonna click on okay. And so we've gone from that, where the background is all in focus with the foreground to this, where we've got a nice graduated blur. And remember, we started this off in Lightroom. So let's go back into Lightroom and see if we can make a few more adjustments. So if we go to File and click on Save, not Save As, but save, that's gonna save it up there, there. see that? Gonna go to 100%. And if we go back now into Lightroom, that now has created a copy. So now we have the original and the blurred um, effect now back in Lightroom. So now we can go and carry on with editing and we can do the normal stuff, you know, bring up the vibrance and carry on editing. And I'm just gonna give it a bit of sharpness, which I prefer doing in Lightroom anyway. I don't want it too harsh. And I'm just gonna mask holding down the Alt or Option. And that's just gonna show me where it's gonna mask. The white areas is gonna mask more uh, sorry, effect where it's black is going to be masked and where it's white is going to be affected. So we don't want it too much on the big areas, but just on the edges. So that's enough. And that is just about it. Let's give it a bit of a vignette. And we can boost the colors. Normal, normal editing now back in Lightroom. Bring down the highlights, open up the shadows just a bit. Normal stuff. Give it a white point and a black point. Something like that. And that's very quickly how we make a GoPro photo into a DSLR photo effect. Um, I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something. I know it was a bit long and I didn't want to originally make it that long but I loved how you can chop and change and jump into Photoshop back into Lightroom with the effects so try it see what you think hopefully you've learned something my name's Rob take care see you next time